Sometimes I hear people talking about me. Every place I go, I always run into the same kinds of people. No matter where I am, it seems like this certain type of person is always there, always. This person over here talks so much. This person over here keep a mess. And it just seems like I can't get away from a certain type of person. It just seems like it's impossible almost to get away from people with a toxic personality or toxic attitude. And I'm sick of it. I don't understand how it is that I'm always in a certain culture. I find myself in a culture of people and I don't understand why. How is it? That I continue. I don't look for mess. I'm not the type of person I don't believe I am, but when you create a world and you live in a reality, you think that your stuff is normal. But I I don't know. You know, I don't I treat people right. I don't do all of this stuff these other people are doing and it seems like they always flocking to me when you live in a certain reality your reality whatever your mind state is becomes normal you can't see yourself you see others but you can't see yourself I wish that I could just get away and just get rid of all of these toxic people. Well, my sister, my brother, I think you created this mess. The reason they thrive in the environment that you are in, the same environment that you are complaining about, the reason they thrive in that environment is because you created the culture. This is the culture that you've created. I talked to this young lady and she was telling me, you know, this is my fourth state that I've been in in three years. I've lived in four different states and I keep meeting the same types of people. And I've been to four states in three years, four states in three years. You've been to four states in three years. You've gathered up your stuff. And moved four times in three years. And there's something wrong with other people. The problem is, I told the young lady, you haven't addressed the state that you are in. You had some situations in one state. Listen to me carefully. I told her, in this particular state, the one that you were in before you decided to start hopping all over the country, there were some issues that you didn't address in that state. No, I'm not talking about a geographical location. I'm talking about a mental state. You didn't deal with some mental issues. You never took the time because there were so many people around you who were living in mess, you thought, and you were able to project your stuff onto them and you never had a reason to reflect on you and deal with your own mental state. But let me tell you something. So I see two things in there, young lady. I see a few things, actually. The first thing is, 
Look at who you choose to be around. So something is wrong with the environment. Let me tell you what I mean. Parasites, they look for a particular environment. And if that environment is not suitable for them, they do not habitate that environment. So if you find yourself with, I've told you this once before. So if you finding monkeys in your front yard, there's a reason that those monkeys are in your front yard. Check your trees. See if you are growing bananas. So if they are toxic people who are always around you, Examine the environment, examine yourself because you are emitting from you some sort of energy. You are breeding, you are cultivating toxicity right where you are. You are the cause of the audience that you have. I want you to understand that. Your audience comes according to what they want to hear. They will pay money to participate in a certain type of atmosphere. And you are orchestrating it for free. So it's not them. I told her, listen, here's the second thing. You blaming it on the physical state and you get out of that state and then you go and you meet some other people who are like-minded before you even got to that new state some people were waiting on you to come you don't even know those people but you called them you told them to move right in that apartment complex where you headed you don't even know the people but you've already set up Everything you need to continue in your mess before you even got to that state because of your internal state. So you're trying to figure out why is it that I keep meeting the same people? Well, let me tell you something. It's because of what you are giving off. You are calling people into your life that you don't even know you are setting up situations for your own failure. It's because of your mind state. We don't understand the power and authority we have as human beings, as children of God. We don't understand that we were made in his image and we are able to create spaces for ourselves. Now, God created this world. And he allows his children to create the world they want to live in. If, if you're not creating a world, you at least create an environment. We are creators of environments. Can you say that with me? I have created the environment I live in. I created it because of the state of mind I live in. The brain is only the organ of the mind so just like this physical brain that we have in our head it's the organ that instructs our body parts the brain is what tells our physical bodies what to do but our minds put the brain and those electrical impulses, our mind causes electrical impulses. I want to show you something. How do you think you have your cell phone? Your wireless entertainment system. Radio control cars. Those are frequencies. They operate on frequencies. And electrical impulses. So you 
don't even know that you are sending out frequencies into the world and you are connecting with people who don't even know you. So that's why when you meet them for the first time, oh my goodness, it's not like you meeting strangers. It's like you having a party. It's like you already sent them invitations to move in that apartment before you even get there. I wanted you to be my next door neighbor. But you don't even understand how you got in this mess. Let me read something to you and I'm finished. I just wanted to give you a quick word today. I'm going to read something to you and then I'm finished because I had to talk to you about a culture that we are creating and the power of our minds. The brain centers of thought may be developed by exercise. While we do not assert that the brain and the mind are identical, it is nevertheless a scientific truth that the brain is the organ of the mind. And that one of the first requisites for a good mind is a good brain. It has been proven by experiment that the brain cells concerned in special mental activities multiply in proportion to the active use of the special faculties employed in the mental operation. Let me read that again. It has been proven by experiment. So they've tried this and they see that it's true that the brain cells concerned in special mental activities multiply in proportion to the active use of the special faculties employed in the mental operation. So what does that mean? That means that if you've exercised these negative muscles of your brain. If you have caused your brain to crave something that's toxic, if you've caused your brain to crave drama, pain, toxic relationships, people talking about you, arguments, if you become disagreeable, you don't even know what it feels like when someone agrees with you. You still want to argue. So that's what I'm talking about. You've created a culture in your brain. And so now you've built up a sort of muscle in your brain known as brain cells. Listen, just like one brick laid on top of another brick. You are building a house. Is that right? That's what I'm talking about, about a culture. I want you to follow me in this thought. So one brain cell built on another one that you will continue to feed if it's negative energy, your brain is being programmed. And then, listen, let me, let me tell you something. I want to show you something. We're going to get back and read into this. I want you to hear what the author is saying. Now, for those brain cells in the area of your mind or your brain that you are not cultivating and building up, they start to die off. I want you to see the psychological effects of living in a toxic culture. So those brain cells that you are not actively using, they start to die off. Or at least they start to decrease. But those things that you are most comfortable in, those are the things that you keep feeding into your mind. Those are the brain cells that you keep on building up. So in essence, I don't want to call anybody dumb, but I'm just telling you that those brain cells that are responsible for the higher functions of life, for those technical abilities, for the creative genius in you, the, that area of your brain that's designed to create for you, that area that's designed to analyze critically for you, you start to lose those critical analysis abilities. 
You can't even think critically anymore because you've abandoned that positive thinking for the negative thinking. So now you just left with just like what a parasite does. I, I'm not talking about anybody. I want you to know that I'm not talking to anybody because I plan on building you up today. But it's just like a parasite. Once that parasite gets finished with an apple from the inside out, it's hollow. That's what you are left with after you cultivate negativity. I want you to understand this. I want you to send this to somebody. Tell them, I'm not talking about you. Now, this ain't for you. I wanted you to just pass this along. This minister asked me to share this. This is not for you, but you know it's for them. You want them to have it. Because you can't even, you're getting tired of being around them. But don't tell them it's for them. You at least want them to watch it. Just tell them to pass it on to somebody. It's not for you. This is not, nah, uh, uh. if they ask you, well, nah, I think you trying to be sarcastic. Nah, I think you mean this for me. Nah, no, no, I like being around you. No, it's not for you. But I'm just trying to help this man's ministry out. So just pass this along. But in your mind, you're saying, I hope you get this. I hope you know that this is for you. Let's get back in here. It has also been ascertained that disuse of special faculties of the mind tends to cause a process akin to atrophy in the brain cells. Listen, watch what he's saying. Concerned in the particular activity so that it becomes difficult to think clearly along those particular lines after a long time period of disuse you've avoided critical positive thinking or useful thinking for so long you've abandoned that side of the garden i want you let's keep it spiritual you've abandoned that side of the garden for so long adam you've been on one side where i told you not to be plundering around. I told you to stay from over there. But you've been over there for so long. Look at what's happening on the other side of the garden. All kinds of wild, out of control situations are going on over there. It's inhabitable now. It doesn't even look like a paradise because you've been on the other side for so long. All in other people's business. You can't even take care of your business. That's why you're getting fired. You don't even understand why you're getting fired. But you come home and tell your family, well, I don't know why they fired me. You know, people just hate me. I don't know why everywhere I go, these people, they just all, they all gang up on me. But you know what it really is? Even when you at work, you in somebody else's department. That's why you bis you get home and you tired. But you hadn't done an ounce of your own work. You tired, you a busybody. You hadn't even done your own. You didn't put your hand to none of your stuff. And you're trying to figure out why these people fired you. But I'm always doing this. But it's not your stuff. But I'm always helping this person. But you haven't helped yourself. You don't even see your own demise. You're so busy doing nothing. And you're tired. I know you're tired. So I'm going to help you out before we get finished. Moreover, it is known that the education and mental culture of a child is accompanied by an increase in development of the brain cells connected with the particular fields of the thought in which the child is exercised. So that's simply saying that 
if you don't raise up a child in the way that that child should go, if you don't train, if you don't educate, if you don't cultivate, if you don't challenge your child, you are not building up muscle of the mind. So that child now has a side of his brain that's not even functioning properly. You're trying to figure out why is it that it's almost like the child has dementia. It's a form of dementia because that part of his brain that's responsible for critical thinking is dead. Because mom and daddy didn't even teach the child. We wonder why sometimes... Different cultures of people, they are good in mathematics. You know who I'm talking about. They are good in electronics. You know who I'm talking about. And then you see another culture of people, another group of people, and you say, well, we not that good in that stuff. You know why? Because that side of the brain is dead. But they are skilled in some stuff. I hate to say it, but they are skilled in some stuff. They skilled in all sorts of foolishness. Tell them to roll this up. They know how to roll that thing up like it was a machine that did it. Tell them to curse somebody. I hate to say that because I might be telling on how I was raised. Tell them to curse somebody out. You don't even have to tell them. That's the side of the mind that has been cultivated. You can tell where they've been. You can tell where they've been living by the part of their mind, by the part of their brain that's sharp. They are astute in foolishness. And then you tell them, I don't know why little Johnny can't tap in to this stuff. So you want them to shift their thinking and start thinking from the good part of their brain or with the good part. Well, you've killed that part of Johnny. You are the ones who have killed little Johnny because of what you've taught him to cultivate. You have created a culture of failure. It's almost like some of our parents, listen to me, I don't, I'm, I'm going to get off of this negativity in a minute, but it's almost like some of our parents have put psychological chains on our brains, put psychological chains on us. I'm not talking about slavery. I'm not talking about what slavery did. I'm talking about what the ones who say they love us have done to us. We are walking around with cycle. Can't you? Didn't you know that? And then they tell us, nah, I, I really, nah, you got to be lying. I can't believe you didn't even know that. You have to be lying. Well, you know, my mother and father didn't teach me that. And so then you get embarrassed so you don't even hang around that group anymore who are functioning on a higher level. So you become exactly who they say you are. You become because you try. I know some little kids who try to be their best. But that part of the brain is dead. Psychological chains of the mind. Let's finish with. This young brother and sister I saw one time in one of my favorite restaurants having trouble with a waitress. I want you to follow me for a second. I was getting out of my car. I saw them all dressed up. They were looking nice. You, I'm telling you, it looked like they just spent their life savings on their clothes. They were really looking nice. But I saw him shoot the bird at somebody who took their parking spot. I want you to follow me for a minute. I saw him shoot the bird. Now they looking good on the outside. And because somebody took a parking spot, I saw the young lady shoot the bird at the person who 
took that parking spot. I want to show you these psychological chains and I want to show you the culture that we create. But there were other parking spots over there, but they had their eyes on this one and someone else did too. Who saw it first? That's the question. We don't even know who saw it first, but we say, or I believe she said, that person cut me off. But what if that person saw it first, but you all dressed up and still ready to show out? You've dressed up the outer part of your body. You've dressed up the outside. You haven't done anything with the mental state. So they found a parking spot and they went on on the inside. I sat a couple of tables away from them. And I watched them, they ordered a drink to calm their nerves and the boyfriend looked like he was still embarrassed from what happened. It seems like he was trying to talk to her, but she's one of those sisters who, you know, once you ignite that fire. Now, I like that fire, but just in its proper place. She's one of those young ladies not only sisters, but she's one of those young ladies who once you light that fire in the proper environment, you don't want to put it out. But in this one, other people are looking. I think the young man was a little bit embarrassed. So they got inside and next thing you know, the waitress got her order wrong. I was sitting back saying to myself, oh my God, what's getting ready to happen in here? Now she's already upset. She hadn't let that go. What happened in the parking lot? That's still in the back of her mind. She, I wish that person, I hope, I hope they come in here. But that waitress messed up her order. And that waitress was having the same type of day that that young lady was having. I'm talking about two atomic bombs meeting each other. Two creatures of a negative habitation. They meeting each other. Both of them unhappy about the culture that they are in and they met each other. It was nothing but chaos. Even though that young lady finally ate her meal, she didn't even taste the meal because her mind wasn't even on eating anymore. But let me tell you about this psychological thing that we send out these brain waves. These sound waves, these invisible waves that make things move. Before that young lady left home that day, she called the manager. She didn't use a phone. Now listen to me. Go with me in the spirit. She called the manager on the phone and said, hey, listen. I want you to put the employee who's having the worst day, put them in my section. I want you to have the cook who always get orders wrong, have them to make my meal. And then I want it to be late. And bring it to me then because I want to cut up today. That's what you've done with these invisible signals. So what I want to leave you with today is this. That you are living in a created culture of your own mind. It's nobody else's fault. But I told you I was going to leave you with something positive. Now let me tell you how you get out of it. You have to realize that 
Nobody creates your mess. And you can't stop people from doing whatever it is that you feel that they are doing to you. But the reason you believe that people are doing it to you is because of what's in you. You are perceiving these things. The world is mental. We live in a world that is created by the mind. So when you perceive that someone is intentionally taking a parking spot from you, that person doesn't even know that you were looking at that spot. That person, you saw that spot when you were on the other side. You were three rows down and your boyfriend said, there's an open spot over there. And somebody else was coming. They were two rows closer than you. You started speeding up to get to that parking spot. And they were right there taking their time because they were closer. They didn't even see you. That person didn't even know you existed. It's the culture that you have set up. You created that mess. Glory, hallelujah. And then after all of that is over, she calls up her girlfriend and say, girl, you know this world is a trip. You know I'm, you know we go to church and we, you know, I, I, somebody told me that when you try to get closer to the Lord, that's when the enemies come out. That's when the enemy work even harder. Girl, you know, me and my man, you know, we were having a little bit of problems and we decide we're going to go back to church. The minute we decided to go back to church, here comes the enemy. Uh, before I even we, we decided to go into a restaurant before I can even get in the restaurant, girl, the enemy attacked me. This lady, she saw me coming for that parking spot and she turned right in front of me. I'm talking about the, the devil sure is busy. You know, just because you've decided to go back to church, that doesn't mean that the enemy is targeting you just because you are starting to see the enemy. I'm going to just pull up beside you and just whisper this to you. It's now that you've started to change your mind state. You have made a conscious decision to change your mind state. You are starting to see yourself. A lot of times, you are your own enemy. You are your biggest enemy. You are your biggest hindrance. 99% of the time is you. It's not an enemy outside of you. Let me tell you something. You remember that day when you were putting on perfume? You had your eyes done right. You had your hair laid exactly how you wanted your hair to lay. You remember you picked out the perfect combination of clothes to go with your purse and your shoes. You remember how good you looked on the outside. You were looking good. You were all done up on the outside. But you hadn't done anything for the inside you were dressed up and looking nice on the outside but that day that you said went so wrong you dressed up for it on the inside you don't realize that you dressed properly on the inside for everything that happened on the outside you dress for it it wasn't no enemy. You are the enemy. It's not the enemy attacking you because you went to church for three weeks in a row. You are just seeing who you've been living with. You are seeing who your husband has been living with all this time. You are seeing who your wife has been living with all this time. God is revealing the enemy to you. And it hurts real bad. 
when we find out that we are our own enemy. We all know this scripture. I'm going to say this scripture because I know I'm out of time. But God told Moses to create an image. He told Moses, Moses, I want you to take an image because the people have been getting bitten by venomous snakes. I want you to create an image. And I want you to have the people to look at that image. That's the enemy that you are seeing. God is causing you to see yourself. The only way that you can change is for you to be presented with yourself. We telling God, God, I'll be all right. I'll be so much better if you just get so-and-so out of my life. Oh, yeah, God, and don't forget about him over there. Get him. Keep me from meeting any more of this guy. Keep me from meeting another Susie, God. I'll be fine. I'll be able to go to church. I'll be able to get my life right. If you get these people out of my life, God, I need you to hear my prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm calling on you right now. God, I'm in my closet and I need you to move so and so out of my life. And God say. What you need to be praying. I, I hear you. I know that you feel the way that you feel. And I understand your feelings. But here's the proper prayer. This is the prayer that I would hear. If you say, God, do something with me. I'm calling on you to move me out of my life. God, I've been messing up my life for a long time and I didn't even know I was responsible. I didn't even know that I had the power to do the things that I'm doing to myself. I thought it was other people, God. I remember I was reading the Bible and you asked Eve, Eve, who told you this? And she blamed the serpent. I remember that when you asked Adam, Adam blamed his wife. But at the end of the day, God, it's me. God, move me so that I can see my way. And so that I can walk in my future. So that I can walk into the promised land. God says, good. Now let me tell you about a story you've been reading you had been reading this story about the Israelites and you know you've been going to church for the last three weeks and the preacher was preaching about all of Israel's enemies. People dying left and right. The Bible has me killing all sorts of people because of Israel. But why did Israel keep on being like the people? I'm talking to your inner man now. If God killed all of Israel's enemies on the outside of them, why did Israel continue to be plagued with the same thing those dead people were plagued with? They killed the people, but yet they served their gods. Come on, I need somebody to witness with me. I believe we have the story a little bit backwards. These weren't people outside of Israel. These were the same types of people that Israel was. Israel were these same people. Israel had some enemies, but those enemies were in Israel. I believe the Bible is teaching us that the enemies that Israel was fighting, they looked like them. They acted like them. They sounded like them. They talked like them. They walked like them. Because the greatest enemy that a man will face is the enemy who lives on the inside of him. Come on now. I'm not talking to nobody else. I'm talking to my congregation now. Some of you have been asking me, well, aren't 
the Israelites, the chosen people. I believe God has spoken to me for me to give you an answer. God is saying that you are not chosen because you are certain people. God is saying, don't you understand that Adam was chosen? Adam was chosen because of who he looked like. But the reason you are going through what you're going through is because of who you are acting like. You are not acting like the child that I created. You are acting like the world. The reason you are experiencing what you are experiencing in this world. And then you feel like other people over there, they are favored. If you start acting like who you look like. Come on. I'm trying to tell you something now. It's not about who God has given or shown favor to. God told me, I treat all of you the same because in my eye, I only see my child. I only see one son. But the reason you are getting what you are getting is because of what you are acting like. God say, I choose you. But do you choose me? Everybody is talking about favor, favor this and favor that. God, the only favor I want. I want to favor my father. I want to favor my brother. Glory, hallelujah. Listen to me. I know I have to go. I know I told you I wasn't going to keep you long, but just one more thing. God told me to tell you just one more thing. I just have to let you know one more thing. God say, you know, when I look at you, I can't even tell you apart. All of you look like somebody. All of you look like the person I wanted you to look like. All of you are in the same image. He said, but as I'm, when you're talking about favor, when you asking me the question about favor, I want to tell you something about favor. If you want favor, start looking like who you favor. I favor those who look like me. I created you in a certain image. When you come in that image, I don't withhold favor from you. Favor will flow all over you. And when you start looking like the one who favors you, glory, hallelujah. I'm feeling it now. I got my help now. I believe that I have my strength. You've been waiting to hear me preach. Well, I'm preaching now. God is telling me to tell you that when who you look like aligns with who you are. Let me say it to you again. When who you are lines up with who you look like. Glory, hallelujah. When you start walking according to who you are, God said that when you start to act like who you look like, when you start to realize who you are, favor will start busting out all around you. Your relationships will change. The people on your job will change. You'll start getting that parking spot. It doesn't matter how long it take you to get to where you supposed to be. It'll be waiting on you. You don't have to beat somebody to the promise. Nobody can walk in your promise when God give it to you. I tell you right now, we don't have to panic for our blessing. Our blessing is waiting on us to realize who we are. I'm walking in my promise because my inside is lining up 
with my outside. A glory, hallelujah. God is trying to tell you something. Just give me just one more minute. I remember when I was just a little boy and I used to get in trouble. My mama called me over there and she said, come here, Lawrence. I'm going to tear you up for what you did. I said, mama, I didn't do it. She said, what you mean you didn't do it? I already asked Kevin about it. Kevin said he didn't do it. I said, mama, I didn't do it. See, I said, the devil made me do it. She said, boy, you lying. I said, mama, the devil made me do it. She said, boy, the devil ain't even real. She said, come here, boy. I said, mama, but the pastor, the pastor told me that the devil would make me do it. He said, the devil is the reason for everything that's going on in the world today. Mama said, I'm going to still beat you. I'm going to beat the devil out of you, boy. You lying to me. The devil ain't even real. The next time I went to church, I told the pastor, I said, let me tell you something. You got me in trouble. You made me tell my mama that the devil did it. And mama said, mama said she was going to beat the devil out of me. Y'all just give me just one more minute. I'm trying to get something out. I'm trying to tell you what God is telling me. God said, now that Jesus has taken away the keys from the enemy, we don't have nobody else to blame. We don't have nobody else to blame. The blame is back on us. God said the world is now back in order. There's a shift of things now. The world is back in the children's hand. For those who are still blaming the devil, God said, then the salvation, then Calvary don't mean nothing to you. Glory, hallelujah. I looked that pastor in the eye and I said, you got me in trouble. And that pastor said, I'm a level with you, son. Son, I'm sorry for what I did to you. I'm a level with you, son. I'm sorry for what I did to you. Your mama was right. But she didn't have no reason to beat you. The reason we used to beat you, I'm talking about the old school now. The reason why we used to beat our children is because we were children of slaves. You don't have to beat your children no more. You don't have to beat your children to raise your children. Teach your children to reach your children. Those are your children. Those are not your slaves. That was the old time gospel. This is the new gospel now. That preacher said, I have to level with you right quick. I'm going to level with you for a minute. The reason I used to preach the devil, I know that Jesus has given us the keys back. But the reason I used to preach the devil is because it preached so good. The people wouldn't pay me if I told them it was them all along. The people don't want to hear the truth. The people don't want to hear what God has to say. I'm trying to tell you something. Just bear with me just one more minute. All I need is just one more minute. God said he has given you the keys back. God said the people who look like him need to start acting like him. Glory, hallelujah. If you want to see an, a blessing in abundance, you have to start living with abundance.